let us say that you are experiencing an inner or an outer conflict, a situation that is painful and is generating negative emotion. If you have the right information in the memory of how to overcome or transcend that particular situation, you would immediately overcome it, right? It would be automatic. There would be no delay. Before the fire takes off, you would solve it. With the first indication of conflict or suffering, you would immediately address the issue effectively from the information you have in the memory and problem solved, no drama, right? However, if the emotional reaction to the situation keeps moving forward and there is mental tension and stress in the body and perhaps stress in a relationship, I guarantee it, the information you need is not in your memory. It is not part of the programs in the mind-body organism and you simply cannot solve the issue. In other words, the very fact that you are emotionally activated means that you need help. <clears throat> Therefore, in that situation you are in a very interesting predicament. You need to get a piece of information, an insight, that at that moment in time you don't even know what it is. But one thing you know for sure, what you need is to increase understanding. You are looking for an understanding that at that moment is not in the mind-body organism. You are looking for a new insight, a new thought that needs to enter your brain. And how will you know that that thought or idea has entered? Because it will be recognized beyond doubt as an aha, I got it. In psychology, it is called an aha moment or an insight. So let us review the situation. There is suffering arising and it doesn't go away immediately. It means that we need to find something that is not in the memory and that likely has never been there before. Never in your life. And unless we address this lack, there will be no solution. We can bury the feelings, we can bury the situation, but of course later a similar situation will arise until we seek understanding. So, how can we seek that understanding? This is the million dollar question. How can we seek that insight? It is really easy. The only thing you need to do is to ask for it. Because it is not in you, it is not in the memory, so you need to ask for it. The universal consciousness knows exactly what needs to be understood. And you are that universal consciousness. You are the divine. Therefore, you as the ego need to ask. If you put it in non-dual terms, you simply formulate the question as what needs to be understood here. If you put it in relationship terms, in dualistic terms, then you ask, please, God, help me. <laughs> what is it that I need to understand? Right? That's in dualistic terms. Now, of course, in non-duality, we don't personalize God because we don't want to put it as something separated from us. Because it is actually not separated at all from you. But the minute you begin to talk to God, you are creating a fake separation. And you are identifying yourself, this is worse, you are identifying yourself with a little self that is now talking to God. But the truth 
remains. That separation is not there and never was, because actually you are God. You are the universal consciousness looking through the mind-body organism, of course. Therefore, those bhakti moments are not a big deal, but you want to reduce them to a minimum. So I personally recommend a non-dual approach. Remember grammar? The active voice versus the passive voice? Well, instead of using the active voice in English, you ask the question in the passive impersonal voice. Instead of, what do I need to understand here, you simply say or ask, what needs to be understood here? That's the passive voice. And after you ask the question, you make silence in the mind for a few seconds. That's it. That's all that is necessary. Sometimes one second is enough and the answer comes in, in the form of a thought or an idea. The humility of asking is all that is necessary. You make silence for a few seconds and quite often the answer comes immediately, right after the question. At that moment, you are accessing divine wisdom and the aha gives you an understanding of the situation that you didn't have before. And then, the situation that the situation has fulfilled its deepest, deepest purpose. Reprogramming the mind, body, organism, no less. The programs in the mind, body, organism, which is a highly programmed entity, have changed and have matured through the experience. Interestingly, the experience now no longer needs to exist and soon begins to dissolve. The tension you are having with the other person, for example, dissolves. The tension that you were having in your body dissolves. The stress is gone. Of course, the path of understanding can be used before awakening and after awakening. Before awakening will be used by the little self. So the little self can also ask, providing it has the necessary humility to ask. For example, it may ask, I would like to know what I am missing here. What is it that I am not understanding? Please help me. Right? However, the problem is that the ego is anything but humble and tends to believe that it is the doer and will want to solve the issue, the issue without help. It will bring the sword out and attempt to slay the dragon and kill it all by itself. Or in relationship. When there is a conflict, the ego will project blame into the other person. Why? To save its self-esteem. It will say, this has nothing to do with me, I have no problems, there is nothing that I need to change in myself, there is nothing I need to understand, and therefore it is his or her problem, not mine. The ego loves to do that projecting and not taking responsibility. I don't need to learn anything here because I am perfect. Sounds familiar? And yes, in fact you are perfect, but not as the ego. You are perfect as the divine consciousness. That's why awakening is so useful. Because during awakening, the ego is seriously reduced and become, becomes more humble. Additionally, 
the realization that the ego is a fake self and it is not you gives birth to the observation of the ego. That observation is invaluable and gives you the power to think, feel, and act according to your highest interest now and not to the petty interest of the ego. And then when confronted with negative emotion, the ego will hum be humble enough to say, okay, I accept it. There is something here that needs to be understood. And I can't figure it out. Now, let's go back to that moment when you ask the question, what needs to be understood here? You ask the question, you made silence, and then the answer may come immediately. Or may not come immediately, right? So I want you to know that there is the possibility that the answer may not come immediately. However, it will come. When and how, we don't know, but it will come. It will come perhaps in a dream that night. It may come as a thought two hours later. It may come through a friend that tells you something that clicks or through a coach. It may come through a YouTube video that you watch later that day or through something that you read when you open the book. It may take some time, usually not that long, but it will come. Because this process is controlled by the law of free will. This law, which is ultimately an illusion, of course, controls the life of sentient beings living in dualistic worlds. The law states that if the ego consents, then consciousness can intervene. But if your ego holds to the attitude, I can do it, consciousness cannot help you. This is also valid for awakening. For example, there was a moment in the process for this mind-body organism you call Yan that wanted to wake up. It had really struggled for 30 or more years and the awakening was not happening. So I began to use this principle in a very simple way. Every morning I was sitting down with my wife to meditate and before meditation we were eating a little bit of an alchemical substance called Omos. You can buy it in Amazon. These type of substances are supposed to potentiate your intention. So right after the almost, after eating the almost, we were stating our intention. I want to wake up. I want to wake up. So we didn't know it at that time because you only understand awakening when you get it. But we were definitely making a choice to reduce ego drastically and see it for what it is, a fake self, a fake being. In a way, the egos in us were consenting to die because awakening kills about 50% of the ego and later the embodiment finishes the job. So it is true that after awakening, you as the mind-body complex are never the same again. So when the ego begins to ask for awakening, it is really asking for its demise. And, and I tell you, that is great, because life without an ego is beautiful, and life with an ego is hellish. It is as simple as that. We don't need so much ego. Here in this planet we have way too much ego. That's why we have the horrendous problems we have here in this planet. With 10% of the ego that we presently have, we would function probably perfectly well. And in a way, you can function perfectly without ego too. 
or perhaps leaving just 1% of the ego, which occasionally could be helpful when you need to assert yourself appropriately in a given situation, right? So the problem with the path of understanding is not that it is not effective, of course. It is very, it is extremely effective. However, we tend to forget asking. We tend to forget that it's up to us to ask for understanding. We are in a situation that is somewhat difficult, painful, there is suffering, and we fail to ask for the information we so badly need. And this includes physical issues too. Let's say you are having some physical problem. The first tendency that we have is, okay, I'm going to check with a health practitioner, or I am going to check with Dr. Google and make a search for my symptoms, right? Dr. Google is very effective, by the way. Well, but what if instead we take a moment to think, hmm, Maybe this condition is here because there is something I need to understand. Or better, that needs to be understood. It could be about the organism nutritional habits. It could be about the organism's exercise habits. It could be about the organism's thought habits. It could be about a dynamic, a pattern that has not been resolved. It could be about an emotion that has been buried. It could be so many things. So why not asking? The mind-body organism is one organism. It is not two. It is not the mind and the body. That doesn't exist. It is one thing, one unit. So any problem in the mind can make the body sick, and any problem in the body can make the mind sick. It goes both ways. So when there is a problem in the body, the solution might be changing your thoughts, your attitudes. Then, instead of jumping to fight the symptom, why not asking first? Why this symptom is showing up here? What needs to be understood here? What is it that this condition is coming to tell me? And if you ask that question with humility, it will be answered immediately or later. Usually fast, in a matter of hours or sometimes days. And then you will have clarity. Oh, this condition is because of blah, blah, blah. Okay, enough talking. Let us move now into the questions and answers section for the satsang. 